I think since what you might call Newtonian science began, there's always been a major problem about how free actions or conscious intentions or purposes could exist in nature because the Newtonian view is you've got laws of nature, they don't have any purposes in them, they're just mathematically statable laws like the inverse square law and gravity. Uh, and of course for Newton, God made the laws, but he made the laws like making a clock. So you make the laws, but the clock itself doesn't have any purposes. God had a purpose in making it, but the purpose is not in nature. So that was a huge change from Aristotle, who thought that everything had a purpose that it sought to fulfill, it had some state that it ought to aim at. And now in that context, in the Aristotelian context, human purposes, human free actions made a sort of sense because you could say, well, humans are just like other things, they're aiming at the good life, and so you think, what is the purpose of the good life and how can I attain it? What are the virtues? But once that view changed about nature, and you just had laws of nature, then ideas of purpose got lost. And so one half of science, I think only one half of it, has become more and more purposeless, that is to say mechanistic. And it would um, actually seek to eliminate any idea of purpose or goal or value or morality or consciousness from nature. So that leaves you with a reductivist material, materialist view where everything can be uh, analyzed down to its basic material components and that's all there is. That explains everything there is. Mm -hmm. And then you can't explain what mind is. I mean, you, you, you can say you can do it. Philosophers like Dan Dennett pretend that they know. But actually, no, no fully informed person would say that any neuroscientist has explained how it is that consciousness arises or what it is. We have to say the subject's in its infancy uh, and everything is open. But what's interesting from the philosophical point of view is that very few philosophers uh, are convinced that materialism is true. That is a reductive sort of materialism which says you just explain consciousness, purpose and value in terms of laws, physical laws, of the interactions of very small physical particles. I think that's a totally unconvincing view. It's defended by some good philosophers. They had to be good to make any sense of it at all. Um, but in fact, I doubt whether their view will uh, have any lasting influence. If you think about having a purpose, think of a, think of a person who's thinking what to do. And what you do is you think about future possibilities. So that's already a very difficult thing if you just have a material account of the world, because how can you have an event in the present which is somehow oriented towards the future? You know, if you think of the future, then that seems to be difficult for a purely material thing. You know, here's a table, it's purely material. There it is. There's nothing future about it. But if I think about my future possibilities, what I might do tomorrow, I'm having a brain event, but it's somehow connected to the future in, an in, in a special way. So that's a big problem. How do you, it's called in philosophy intentionality or aboutness. You know, you have a thought which is about something. Well, how on earth can you give a descriptive account of a material state which includes aboutness? You know, it's not only a state, but it's about something else. So I think there is a, that's one of the major differences between a mental description and a physical description, uh, the, the sense of aboutness. And then, of course, the other part of, of that is that you decide to do something for the future. If you have a purpose, you decide to do it. And again, decisions are very difficult to account for. If you're talking about laws of gravity, you don't normally think things are making decisions about whether to be attracted to other objects or not. And so there's nowhere to get this language in. So decision, aboutness, thought, feeling, to all those things are very difficult for a materialist to explain. They have to try to do it, of course, but I don't think anybody's really quite satisfied with it. <laughs>